Okay, traders, market's moving. Dollar's broken support. Let's see where we are. Price, dollar index wise, currently sitting at 103.27. 103.50 this morning was the level to identify for the break or the bounce, which is what was put out across the community. Dollar weakness come in post news. We won't go into that. We'll go into that more of an advanced level. However, price is now trading below 103.50. As we can see, price this week has pretty much just bounced between 103.50 and 104, a 50 pip range. For those of you that work close with me will know that I always work in increments of 50 on across all of our majors. That helps us position our intraday trading opportunities, giving us boundaries to target, but also areas to look for bounces from. So 103.50 below was our area to look for short term shorts. Personally, we're still dollar long in the near future, but now we've got to understand the momentum is weak post news. So we have to adapt and take advantage accordingly. I want you guys to take into consideration um, February's low, which met a price at 103.17. Maybe just jot that down, guys. 103.17 potential low. Even if we stick a level in there, just to remind yourself, it's allowing you currently about 10 or 11 pips away from potential support. So for those of you that are trading dollar weakness, I want you to bear in mind 103.17 and, of course, 103 support to look for these bounces breaks of support once once again or then open the doors to further shorts and we have to trade it on a momentum basis when you're trading momentum it's very reactive we're not there to sit patiently and look at our weeklies and monthlies and plan the most beautiful trade when money's in the market momentum's moving it's a smash and grab approach you're acting on today the now you're not acting on what could happen in weeks months and years it's a reactive uh, you have to be assertive in your decision you have to take action when the market's moving so that is what we mean when we say adapt to current sentiment however let's see what what price does now taking a bit of a deeper look into this excuse all the lines they're on the charts just for example purposes uh, as we drop to the smaller time frame but cyclicity wise you can see price created uh, inverse head and shoulders you've got one cycle two cycles creates a low new high breaks the low so we're currently sitting in a no trend as such if price does break current low, then this would be your first cycle and a new lower low in a potential downwards move. Now, looking at further down the support, I can't see 101 being met. But however, 101 is about the area where I would look for. And to be honest, if price meets 101, it's going to attract several buyers to step back in. I'm still taking this as as a short term weekly phase two before another leg higher. So until price breaks structure again. The, the truth is in the charts. Price action is the only leading factor in what we do. So we must follow price before making a decision. So that's I'm, I, I still see this as a weekly phase two. So I'm not going to be heavy to the downside. I'm going to be looking for areas to reject and bounce. Euro, we looked at 108.50 as the level to break the first thing this morning. And we started to progress uh, upon that. We saw a nice 50 point move from 108.50 into 109. That's respecting from the 103.50, 104 on dollar index. Dollar index, euro, dollar mirror image. A dollar index is a uh, an asset as such that measures a basket of foreign currencies, but it's heavily weighted towards euro. Over 50% is euro related. So euro dollar most current, current most commonly traded currency pair holds a lot more weight if i know dollar index is strong dollars strong across the board my next point of call will be to short euro dollar just because it has more weight to it market falls quicker than it rises it just suits my my trader personality on the flip side we've got this bounce from from 108.50 market's cycling quite well it's not clean it's not pretty but it is cycling price now above 10900 this here is what we call an exhaustion candle. For a lot of new traders, they'd be diving in gung-ho now, thinking bye, 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 bye. This is a sign of an exhaustion candle. I'm going to be interested to see where today's daily close lies. So if we close back below 10900, I think, okay, fantastic. We're going to edge back deeper time frame pullback. If price starts to plod along and we then get a, a move slightly higher, 10920 is the yearly pivot. So that would be my area to look for that bounce back down. Uh, dollar strength, euro dollar short. So let's just keep an eye on that. And again, to show you a, a daily chart, yes, we've got an, an, an extended cycle in here and price is classed as a daily phase one uptrend as we speak. However, looking at a weekly time frame, which is not what I do commonly because I'm more of an intraday trader, I still want to see this as a weekly phase two, perhaps reject that yearly pivot at 109.20 and then a leg back 
down. This would be my preference uh, to be on the short side of Euro. I don't think it's round the corner, but we're close. Cable. Cable was fantastic. Anything above 127 was bullish for Cable. Um, and again, working in your blocks of 50, you'll see that we've got moving into 127.50, which is just slightly higher than the current high, guys. And you'll see price just shadowed that point. So there you go. Look, your 126 rejection last week. Solid engulfing candle, breaking low, changing structure. We then got to move into uh, from 26.50 into 27, 27.50 arising. So there's your cyclicity. Your market's bouncing. Um, we have formed a higher high in this region. Price is currently showing an inside candle. However, we're only eight minutes into the hour hourly bar. So we'll see how this progresses. Again, it's going to be very interesting, actually, to see how the market closes at the end of today. Um, does momentum shadow through this afternoon and break 127.50 or do we duck back below? So, again, looking at a daily time frame, you've got tons of obstacles uh, slightly higher. So I wouldn't expect price breaking 128. This would be unusual territory for pound to be this high this time of the year. I do want to see dollar pick up some strength again and, and, and then start to see those higher time frame legs lower. Um, but let again, let price action do the talking. What I mentioned at the start of the week was a potential double top formation off of 127 and a leg lower. Um, price action started to show us that that could be the case. And then again, the news related candle price broke 127, huge momentum coming back in. And as you can see, look, the size of this candle is it's a 40 pip move in an hour. And it took pretty much nine hours past that to bring price back to where it was after that one bullish candle. So showed you the weight and, the, and the, the, the momentum in that candle, in fact. So nine hours later, got back to where it started and price started to pick back up. This here isn't strong buying. Um, strong buying is, is what we see here, is what we see here. Um, strong buying, again, is, is, is solid continuation candles. We're not seeing strong buying in this period. So as that market starts to break down, it gives us additional uh, signs, shall we say, that this move may not continue much much higher. Uh, Aussie, Aussie momentum-wise has been fantastic. Again, 65 into 65.50, that 50-point range that we're managing on our, on our hourly time frame comes through each and every time. And you can see you've got lots of softer level interactions through here. Price suddenly broke that today. So we'll be looking for the next point of call um, anywhere between, I mean, 0.66 is an area definitely of interest and a potential target that we could see. Uh, and of course, there's a little bit of room before that as well. So in regards to scenarios, now my preference dollar strength, which I'm, I might have to wait for if I'm completely honest, but my preference being dollar strength, I want to build a scenario either side. So I'll be looking at, again, perhaps uh, a pound rejecting 127.50 or euro uh, rejecting the yearly pivot at 109.20 and then coming down. They're my scenarios for dollar strength. However, if dollar remains weak, I'm not just going to sit on my hand and not trade. So something like Aussie dollar would be the ideal opportunity to then start to look for cyclicity. So if dollar remains weak, we know the market never moves in a vertical line. It breathes, it cycles. So I'd be looking for potential bounces, perhaps back off 65.50, uh, higher low formation. That'll be two cycles in a trend, moving averages crossing over, price above the average price. We're buying on momentum, buying on strength. So Aussie dollar would be my perhaps intraday opportunity should um, dollar remain weak. Kiwi's in a very, very similar position. Just to show you Kiwi from a daily time from a back at support with short term upside potential. 62 would be the ideal area to target. So you've got about 75 pips uh, in play there. So looking at that from a smaller time frame, that's kind of what we want to see. Let get price above, cycle above previous resistance, higher low formation, allow the market to pull back, minimum three bars, bullish engulfing candle, back in we go, trading in line with currency strength and weakness. Dollar CAD, again, working in blocks of 50, guys, makes sense on our majors. We can see price has just been pissing around between 135.50, 136. 136 lies as upside resistance in the short term. Price isn't familiar trading above. And today we started to see the market break down. This is a lot of CAD strength. Again, news related on the back of um, earlier today. It's not all the dollar weakening off here. So we've broken structure. We've broken out of an area of consolidation we've been stuck in. So it's now about what's next. Price is 12 points away from 135. So we're not going to start shorting into levels of previous hard support. 
we need cyclicity. So allow the market to break, retest 135, and you've got a, you've got a, let's call it again, another 50 point move in here down to 134.50. So you now know your blocks, your increments that you're working to and from, and that allows us to measure our risk to reward. If you were to short here and your reward could be potentially blocked at 135, you'll be risking 20, 30 pips for a potential of 12 pip gain. It's not where, what we want to see. Of course, that's an inverse reward to risk. So that's what we're looking at here. We just want to see a cycle below 135, 134.50 potential target. Another scenario should um, dollar remain weak. If price comes and sits on 135 and then we start to get buyers come back in, you've got a range-based trade in here. But again, safe buying comes when we break 136 and start to cycle onwards and upwards. Remember, if your one hour time frame breaks any support or resistance and starts to continue empowering forward, that shows the higher time frame leading the way. We then drop to a 15, 5 and so on to look for cyclicity. Lower time frames provide more trading opportunities, more bars, more cycles, more, uh, more entries. Dollar Swiss is something not high on my list at the minute. Again, we've just been messing around it's not too attractive however if price breaks 0.88 in line with dollar weakness not my preferred option i'll then look at shorting if i see a, uh, a move above these highs in here then i've got a higher time frame higher high and i'd look at continuing that move up not really of interest um dollar yen is of interest to be on the yen strength side so 150.50 was an area we was looking at price to break which suddenly started to break down at the start of this week this isn't strong selling. Momentum's very weak in here. However, it is moving. I mean, we've shifted 100 points in the space of a, a, a day. Not significant enough to say, wow, but it's showing us where it wants to go. Yet the way that yet dollar yen's been positioned, yen has had a hell of a lot of time back in the last year and the start of this year in and around that 150 mark. Um, it's now time for yen to pick up strength. Again, something we discuss at an intermediate advanced level would be how Japan's positioned against the dollar and everything else that's driven fundamentally. If we're just sticking for technicals, for easy, easy listening, easy, easy learning, should we say? Again, buyers running out of steam, sellers kicking back in. So we're now below 49.50, an area that we had to break below. I do want this week to close below um, our, our, our low on the 29th, which is 149.20. So that will just give us a bit more leeway as to where we want to be. As you can see, that's this low in here. So what I'm looking for is, is an additional cycle below. I actually think we'll get the best entry on the four hour time frame. So what we want to see on the four hour, guys, is a break and a break of the 200. Short pullback where I want to see strong sellers, weak buyers. I don't want strong buying in here because that will turn me against short in dollar yen. And then I want to see that leg lower. If dollar yen does drop off, but doesn't look as pretty as other markets or other charts, we'll take the idea that the yen is strong. And then we'll go and trade markets like euro yen. We'll go and trade markets like CAD yen. Where's CAD yen? CAD yen. Um, yes, we got a four hour lower low today, but obviously yen um, strength picked up this afternoon on the back of news. So we need that back below. Pound yen could be an option. Uh, and, and Swiss yen as well, I like. So Swiss yen again broke the four hour low. I needed it to break below my level, as you can see, marked. Let's see if we get a phase two lower high formation form. And then the phase one on the four hour. And then I'll chop into it on the shorter time frame. So don't always focus on the majors for your execution. Majors lead us into where currency strength, currency weakness may still may stand. Then we look at our cross currencies for more opportunities to trade. So if dollar yen drops off, yen cross pairs is the go to. In regards to Bitcoin, guys, loads of you are asking me. Love that breakout above 52,500. Textbook. You learn this stuff and it comes into play. It's amazing. Four-hour cycle. When Again, we're not seeing strong buyers. So for me, I need I need a break breaks above the all-time high. To be honest, I wouldn't really be diving in aggressively until I get breaks of 70,000. Uh, for those of you that know me, I've had a lot of profit taken in recent weeks and i'm actually out of all cfd trades i've still got coins holding in the background but cfd wise spread betting wise i'm out of all uh crypto longs bitcoin longs in particular so it would need to break seventy thousand to be back of interest in myself to trade the momentum of it let's see if that happens i i know there's a lot of talk around the half a date in april and price should tank before it rebuilds so Again, if you are Bitcoin long, start to manage price action. Now, it does look like it's running out of steam. Um, but again, I'm no crypto expert. I'm just trading what I see. 
gold. Gold, again, we want price above 21.50 now, guys. Um, I didn't think we was going to get the break of 20.90, if I'm, current, if, if I'm honest. This was a perfect area for a double top formation. I have been trading some of the momentum throughout that, but it's short, sharp, aggressive management. It's, it, we're not holding on to these positions at all. Uh, breaks are 121.50. Is, is the ideal area to then look for a continuation in momentum. Um, let's see what price does. Again, I'm, I'm definitely interested in the daily close to say uh, to see if we can peak above. That will really open the doors up to more intraday trading opportunities tomorrow. Um, and that's where we're positioned. Core setup wise, gold's been phenomenal. There's been tons of trading opportunities. So that's it, guys. Dollar index, monitor price at 103.17 previous low and 103 support. Breaks of that, again, opens the floodgates to continuation of dollar shorts. So dollar cads, dollar yens, dollar swisses. If we fail to, to break 103 and we start to see a bounce, then you want to see a, a, a similar bounce of 109.20, which is yearly pivot. And that will open the door to dollar strength related trades. There's no harm in having multiple scenarios. We want to go where the flow is, go where the money is and take advantage when trades are, are in front of us. So quick recap of the majors, guys. Keep up the good work, everybody. Keep booking your coaching sessions in. And I hope to see as many of you at all of our live events coming up in, in the near future. Take care, guys. All the best.